Hi everyone, it's great to see you again. Well, autumn is in the air, so today for afternoon tea, I'm going to fix some uniquely delicious apple cranberry scones. Here's how I make the scones. Peel and dice one large apple or one and a half medium apples. You will need enough to equal 100 grams. I'm using Gala apples, but you could use Granny Smith or Fuji or just about any apple you like. Then chop a half cup or 50 grams of frozen cranberries. To make life a little easier, I'm going to make the dough in my electric mixer, which is outfitted with a paddle attachment. Into the mixing bowl goes 377 grams of all-purpose flour. That's about two and a half cups of flour. 75 grams or one-third cup of granulated sugar. One tablespoon of baking powder. Make sure your baking powder is fresh. And a half teaspoon of salt. Okay, give these dry ingredients a quick whisk. Then add a half cup or 113 grams of cold diced butter to the dry ingredients. Just scatter it in. And then Use that paddle attachment to cut the butter into the flour. Do this at low speed. It's going to take one to two minutes. And I forgot to tell you that my oven is preheating to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's have a look. So you should have some pea-sized bits of butter and some bits of butter that are larger than peas. And we're looking good here. Now, if you don't have an electric mixer, you can always cut the butter into the flour entirely by hand. Just squish the diced butter and the flour together until it resembles coarse crumbs. Now, add the apples and the cranberries. And just mix very briefly. Now take 225 ml or one cup of heavy cream and add a splash of pure vanilla extract. That's about a half teaspoon. Add the cream mixture to the flour and then blend at low to medium low speed just until a dough develops and we're good. Yum. Now, lightly flour your work surface. Add the dough. This is a gorgeous dough. It's already really colorful. Ooh. It's tempting to eat this dough without first baking it. Briefly knead the dough. And if any apples pop out, just push them back in. Okay, that's enough. You don't want to over knead the dough. Okay. Now, pat the dough into a circle. Let me grab my rolling pin. And then roll the dough into a one inch thick circle. You can add a little flour to the top if your rolling pin is sticking. My rolling pin is not sticking at all. All right. We're at one inch. So now we're going to cut out rounds and I'm using my two and a quarter inch biscuit cutter. Putting a little flour over here 
so I can dip the cutter first into the flour. And then you want to press straight down. Do not twist the cutter. Put the scone on a parchment lined baking sheet. You should be able to get 10 rounds out of this dough. And then once you've cut out the biscuits, re-roll the dough. Re-roll the scraps, I mean. Again, to one inch thickness. You probably don't even have to use a rolling pin here. You can just pat it out and just continue cutting until you have 10 scones. All right, I was able to cut 11 scones from that dough and I still have some dough left over. So I'm forming the 12th scone just with my hands. To make the scones extra yummy, I'm going to sprinkle the tops with just a little bit of sugar. These go into the preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven just until they puff and start to brown lightly. That's going to take 18 to 20 minutes. And we'll come back when these are done. And here are the scones all puffed and just lightly golden. I'm going to transfer them to a wire rack to let them cool just briefly. Then I'm going to brew a pot of tea and then we can taste of one of the scones. Let's taste the fruits of our labor. Oh, these are gorgeous. Let's see if I can just pull it apart. Yes. These are really delicious at any temperature. I'm serving them a little warm. And I know that they are moist enough that you do not have to put anything like jam on them. I'm going to put a little butter on mine, I think. Okay, first I'm going to have one taste without any adornment at all. Oh, this is exquisite, you guys. You have the sweetness of the apple, the tartness of the cranberry. This is really good. And honestly, this scone doesn't even require butter. The scones go really well with Darjeeling tea. Well, I hope you will give these apple cranberry scones a try someday. They're really terrific any time of the year, but I think they're particularly nice to have during the autumn months. They're super tender, and again, they have that little sweetness and that little tartness. They're just perfect. I'll post the list of ingredients in the description below. Thank you for joining me for afternoon tea today. I hope you will give this video a, a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and be sure to tap the little bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now.